we're gonna talk about a 180. I wanna talk about a 180 here because this is from near the start of the war. This was, I believe, like four or five months in. There was this belief that winter was coming, that as Russia no longer exports as much oil and natural gas and uh, to uh, to Europe and doesn't give them energy resources, they will not be able to heat themselves. And as the Europeans will not be able to heat themselves, they will grow tired of supporting Ukraine. And once they grow tired of supporting Ukraine, they will give up. The Ukrainians will lose their backers and then the Ukrainians will be whittled down and then all will come tr uh, come peaceful with the world. All will be great because Russia will be able to conquer uh, to conquer those who deserve to be colonized, at least putting it in, uh, uh, in a simplistic way. But that's not what happened. The energy crisis that people thought Europe was going to experience turned out to be much more mild than people expected. The Germans, for example, who were dependent on, I think, like 60 percent of their energy ex exports were from the Russians. They pivoted quickly. They were, are now heavily reliant on Norwegian exports and American LNG, which was shipped over on ships from the United States as America tried to produce more natural gas and more energy exports in order to make up for the downfall in Russian energy exports to the European market. And as the Russians tried to make up for European losses with Chinese and Indian sales that only ever made up for about one eighth of the losses that they ended up getting from the drop in EU sales. So ultimately, the EU did end up storing enough energy for that winter. That winter ended up being much more mild than people uh, expected it to be. So the energy requirements were not as high. And the Germans were, and the Germans and really no European power had to engage in large scale energy rationing or really energy rationing whatsoever. And so this did not come to pass. And now that we're in the 2024 winter and we're in the throes of it, it didn't come to pass this time either. That doesn't mean there weren't energy price increases, many of which are starting to stabilize. For example, Gas Party Buddy predicts, and this is in America, not Europe, of course, but Gas Party predicts in the United States that energy prices as of December of this year, of 2024, will be aiming towards 299 and the gas prices are going to continue to decline, and energy prices in Europe are going to continue to decline as uh, it starts to stabilize more and more with LNG exports. So Europe has been able to, even though they did suffer a price increase and that did hurt European consumers, they have been able to successfully make the shift from Russian energy exports to uh, other alternatives like the Norwegians in the United States. That doesn't mean all European powers have done this. The Moldovans are still highly reliant, for example, on Russian energy exports. The Hungarians just don't care. Uh, but Europe, on, on, in large part, has made the pivot and it has hurt the Russian government's coffers. And this never ended up happening. But this winter, I've noticed a pattern. And I don't want to say the turns have tabled, but the turns have tabled to a sad extent, where now this winter, there are stories coming forward of Russians facing a brutal winter, of Russians fa facing heat short, uh, not heat shortage, not gas and oil and natural gas shortages necessarily, but heating shortages as heaters across the country break like this, fail to heat people's homes, and they've had to really resort to burning their property, burning, burning picture frames and, and wood and, and, and couch frames and whatever they can in order to stay warm. And when I'm saying uh, people are having to go through this, I don't mean like a few dozen people. I mean tens of thousands of Russians are going through this uh, throughout Russia right now. Uh, this is just one example. Uh, let me show you an example of a bunch of Russians who had come together to record a video in order to plead with the government in order to deal with the fact that the heaters weren't working and tens of thousands of people had been left without heat in 20 degree frost. Let me say that again, 20 degree frost. And this hasn't just been going on for one day or two days. Hell, in the Moscow area, this has been going on for five days. I've seen houses and I don't got the videos up here. I wonder if somebody else has the videos, but I've seen videos of people's homes almost like, I mean, like the walls are icy, icy. It's bad, bad. Oh, here, here they are. Look, I, it's not, point is though, it's not going great. Here is a recorded video from Moscow residents, people in the Moscow area, uh, requesting help because they can't keep their homes warm. We keep warm with gas stoves, heaters, underfloor heating, and whatever else we can find. We have a boiler room, which is constantly on and off. 
Dissatisfied residents' comments are blocked in chats. It's 13 to 14 degrees in our apartments. We have children and elderly. Help, please. We are freezing. Oh, man, they all said it together. Now, I, I'm not doing this to like mock them or anything. This is honestly very, very sad. Uh, that a bunch of elderly people and children are freezing in the cold as the government doubles spending on the military. The Russian government doubles spending on the military and military spending outpaces social spending as social spending freezes, not even to adjust with inflation. So, I mean, I'm not saying this as like a boast. This is really horribly sad. But I also want to throw out there that all this money that they're now spending in rockets and missiles and drones, the billions they are spending to blow up Ukrainian shopping malls and apartment blocks and kindergartens and schools and hospitals and restaurants, cafes, to blow up all these places, train stations, the Kramatorsk train station disaster. That money could have been spent to rebuild infrastructure, to fix the piping in these homes, to redo these old Soviet homes that, that have, I mean, some of which have been built by, were built by German POWs. I mean, old, like 80, 90 year old buildings, going on 80, 90 year old buildings that need refurbishment, but instead financial resources are being dedicated towards fighting the war, fighting the war and sending off a generation of young Russians to die while the country's going already through a demographic crisis and dreams of, uh, of rebuilding uh, a decades and decades and decades old empire. 